Hi everyone, my name is Amanda Silver Sister, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I want to share with you a couple of the things that I wish I would have known prior to starting my own gray hair grow out. So for those that are returning to my channel, welcome back. Thank you so much for all your support on here. And for all my new viewers, if you just hit that subscribe button, then we can stay connected during your gray hair grow out. Believe me, the support of a community is one of the things that make your transition to gray hair successful. So um, just a little bit about my gray hair grow up before I get started here. So my gray, my hair is um, completely transitioned and I have been growing up my gray hair for, I've been gray or growing up, the start of my gray hair grow up, let's put it that way, was two and a half years ago. So two years, six months. Um, and I have definitely didn't, uh, anticipate my hair would look like this is not what I thought when I started I have a lot of dark in the back I have a lot more white than I thought um, but at the end of the day I love my gray hair and I love encouraging women who are thinking that this is something that they would like to do um, to do so because I think it's nothing that I regret and I highly recommend it actually but that doesn't mean that the gray hair growth isn't challenging and it doesn't mean that you're not going to have times where you're questioning what you're doing. And so I wanted to just tell you a couple of things that I wish I would have known before starting my hair gray, my gray hair growth. Um, so the first thing I think, and I did do a video on this before, but the videos are getting old and they're getting back. So like I, I'm wondering if the new subscribers or the new viewers are seeing them. So I thought, you know, sometimes some of the things are worth repeating. Um, before I actually get started on what those things are, I just want to make a little bit of a fun of myself. So if you have been watching this channel for any time, you know that I do not strive for perfection. If I have a coughing fit, you're going to see it. If the door rings, you're coming with me. Um, I just allow myself a little grace on here regarding the, the learning. Excuse me. I just choked. There's that case in point. Um, the learning curve that is YouTube. Um, so anyways, I want you to know that I have purchased a tripod, so I'm very fancy and I'm using this little microphone, so hopefully you're hearing me better. So this is definitely leveling this up if you are new. <laughs> this is the fanciest one I've done so far. Uh, okay, anyways, so all kidding aside, the things that I wish I would have known. So one of the things, and this seems almost silly to say, and anybody who is, um, you know, a few months into their gray hair journey is probably going to um agree with this i had no idea how long the gray hair journey was going to take i think the reason for that is when you get started on your gray hair grow out it's because your gray hairs are growing in so fast that you're getting frustrated with them and you're like i for whatever reason but for me it's like you know what i don't want to do this anymore i feel like i'm chasing the grays all the time i spent all this money trying to cover up my gray hair and within two weeks i would see you know, little baby grays. So it just felt like the gray hair growing in was happening very rapidly. And I thought, well, let's just embrace them. The moment that you embrace your gray hair, I kid you not, it feels like your hair growth just slows down. And you're like, well, when is this going to start? When am I going to start seeing it? When is it going to look intentional so people don't just think that I'm looking unkept? And so I think knowing that it was going to take much longer than I thought would have just helped my headspace um to not feel frustrated and not to not feel like oh I, I don't know if i'm going to be able to do this so my gray hair grow it took 18 months and i can tell you in my head i thought for sure a year i thought by a year i would be fully transitioned which is not the case so i wish i would have known that i think once i hit around the seven month mark i was getting a bit frustrated but the things that i liked about that was it, now i had enough of grow out that i could kind of see what my gray hair was going to look like i knew that i was going to have a lot of white hair i knew that my hair so my hair is still quite dark in the back i was not seeing the grays there i was loving this streak i was like this this side is quite white i love these little streaks here so i was starting to be able to envision what my gray hair was going to look like so that was a big one um and just knowing that if it I really connected with a lot of Silver Sisters, and I think that that is um, hands down what made it successful for me is just connecting with other women who were doing the same thing and feeling the same frustrations and normalizing it. I followed women who were ahead of me. I followed women who were doing the exact same thing as me. And it's funny because those women who are growing your, it's like when you all have babies together, the ones like you, you go to the knowledge for the people who have older kids, but the ones you actually are pregnant with at the same time or growing out your gray hair at the same time, you kind of have a special bond with those people um, because 
they've just been along the ride with you for so long. And so I feel that way a little bit on here with people who've been watching my cha my my um my videos since the beginning. Like I, I see the, the names, I recognize them. Um, so anyways, whenever you're, wherever that is, so that community, that sense of community is just such a strong um, way to be successful. It's just, it, it, it's like a game changer, I guess. The other thing that I didn't know that I wish I would have known, and believe me, I know this now, is that you really should be watching the heating tools during your grow out. And so for me, like today, I did let my hair air dry. And then at the very end, when it's done and it's just a little bit damp, I do take a curling like wand. I didn't straighten my hair today. I did very little with it today because your hair is so prone to yellowing when you decide to go gray, particularly if you have white hair like I do, it's probably even more. So while you're growing out your gray hair, you're not thinking about how you're treating your grays because you have so little of them. But one thing I would highly recommend is during your gray hair grow, make sure you're getting a hair protector. So I was told about a hair protector all the time when I was a, a brown hair, I never used them. They are so important now. Try to use your heating tools. So your straightening irons, your blow dryers, if you can, maybe just use them on the still, the dyed hair parts. Try to avoid them on your white hair because what's gonna happen is that hair, especially the newest growth that you have, is going to look the yellowest. So I still find that I have air, um, there's a mirror right here if you're wondering why I'm looking there, I just wanna show you. So I find my hair is very white here, but even on the little tips there, I don't know if you see, they're not horrible, but I find the, um, that's why it's so good to go get your hair cut, trimmed off the dead ones, but I do find the, the um, slight yellowing. I'm really good at staying on top of it. I use my purple shampoo maybe every two weeks. I try my best to always use a heat protector, but I didn't realize that that was important during the gray hair grow out. So if I could go back and do it again. I would be more mindful of that. Um, and I think those are the two main things that I wish I would have known. I mean, I also think that, you know, two and a half years in, I, I look back and kind of reflect as to why was I so nervous about it? Was it about looking older? I guess, of course, everybody's associated with, you know, gray hair with looking older. But I really started to see that it really was just a big marketing scam. You know, um, if you look at some of the really old advertisements um, that what women were told about going gray, it was so negative. Um, about how we would look horrible. And if you want to be the life of the party, go use L'Oreal or some really, like I think Clairol was a big one. But the actual marketing advertisements for those were so derogatory regarding gray hair. And it was like that for so many things. Um, I watched a documentary on, um, I think it was called You Are What You Eat on Netflix yesterday. And um, it was talking about like a doctor who would smoke camel cigarettes. And, and again, it was the same era where they were just starting to market these things. Um, what was another one? Milk was another one that was really, really pushed on people. And it was just really clever marketing. So this has nothing to do with whether you smoke or you drink milk or you choose to dye your hair. But what I'm saying is we were really indoctrinated with a lot of these messages early on. And I think that affected our um, attitudes towards things. So um, I, I just think having those things and that knowledge really helps you see while, why people have such a negative thought on going gray. And it helps you realize it's not necessarily the truth. It's just the way we were taught to believe. Um, and so once you start thinking for yourself that way, I've never been a drink the Kool-Aid kind of gal. I always think for myself. Um, but, but the more you see those things, you see that there was a reason why people weren't embracing their gray hair. And it wasn't the reasons that we've been told. It, it doesn't, I don't think my gray hair makes me look older. I actually really love it. There are so many benefits to going gray. So anyways, though, that's my gray hair portion of this. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, and if you are new to my channel, you'll know I usually um, kind of save the things that I wanna talk about that don't have gray hair till the end of my videos. So I wanted to wish you guys all, um, you know, a happy 2024, and I hope you had a happy holidays or Merry Christmas. Um, but I wanted to ask you a little bit about your New Year's resolution. First of all, I want to know if you do them. And second of all, I want to know what you think about them if you do. So I am a huge fan of um, 
doing it, but it's not that I, I, I think the reason that it's always been fine for me is I don't put a lot of weight on them and I don't put a lot of pressure on myself. What I like about January 1st is just this excuse to do all these things that I've been thinking about doing anyways. And it kind of is like um, a reset date for me. And so for me, I've decided, um, so January is going to be a dry January for me. I think I've talked many times about how much I love my wine. We're going away in February and we're going to a resort and you generally overindulge at resorts. So I thought, you know what? January, let's do a dry January. Um, we've been overindulging over the holidays. And then let's also try to eat a little bit better as, you know, we're going to be sporting swimwear. <laughs> so to me, I also look at my successes daily and not as a fail. Like I don't, if I, if I didn't, if I wasn't successful, I wouldn't beat myself up about it. But I'm pretty sure I'm committed to these two and that I will be successful. But I just don't put a lot of pressure on myself. The other thing, um, what was the other thing I was going to, oh yeah, the eating. Oh yes, I've been trying to drink more water, which I am not a fan of water. Um, so what I do in the morning is I have a big, uh, like a water bottle and I fill it and I bring it around. And I, as long as I finish one of those a day, I view that as a success. Again, people would probably say that's not enough water. For me, I've set the bar low. I see that as a success and that's it. And then the other thing that I'm going to do, um, so you guys probably have seen in the past, I was doing some fundraising using my YouTube watches. So what I'm going to do this year, and it's a little bit more about investing in myself, is um, I think I've shared with you guys that I have an Amazon storefront, and I actually love um, shopping. I just don't do it very much. So what I'm going to do is all the money I make on YouTube, I'm going to reinvest it into my Amazon storefront. I'm going to purchase some items that I've been looking at that I want. Um, and then I'm going to feature them mostly on my Instagram. I'll probably come on here and do that as well if you guys are interested. Um, but I think that's just such a fun little job. It really absolutely would be a side hustle. It would be a, a way to make a little income on the side. Um, but I think those things are fun. And just like I, I come on here and make my gray hair, um, for those of you who don't know, I think I've shared this in my last video, is um, I got my first monetized check here on YouTube. So it's not a lot of money. I just made $100. Um, so anyways, I'm just going to take that $100, put it back in my Amazon storefront. Um, and it's just a fun way to come on here and share fun things with you. So I actually have something coming today that I ordered that I'm super excited about. It was only $28. <laughs> but I just want to share that. I feel like that's what girlfriends do, right? You go, hey, look what I bought. You go shopping together. And to me, it was just be a really fun thing to do. And um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. And I viewed all of those as sort of like resets for 2024. Um, again, for those that don't know, I have about 45,000 followers on Instagram because I'm a gray haired account. And I have some goals on my social medias on there. Um, and I can only talk about gray hair so much. So I, I thought I will kind of venture out a little bit. I love talking about pro age and skin. Actually, I got gifted this really cool pillow that I'm going to talk about soon. Um, anyways, I want to do all of those things and I just want to have a little bit more fun on my social media. So those are my kind of 2024 things that I want to do. And if you notice the two about the, the, um, dry January and eating healthy, I haven't put an unlimited expectation. So I've made those both very successful. My Amazon one I did, I feel like you really have to do a fun goal as well. Like I don't want to take life always so seriously. And I think even before January, I really started to focus on my mindfulness. Um, I have purchased so many paint by numbers and they have just really helped me focus and and be calm and just be present and I love them so I obviously I'm going to take that one into um, my new year and continuing to do that and that'll be that one will definitely be a yearly one because it just helps me with a lot of things to just calm down and have some quiet time just for me um, but I'm curious what you think so I know a lot of people are like anti-resolutions and they just think they're horrible and they're a lot of pressure I think it's the date I think people saying that like January 1st I'm going to do that particularly like going back to the gym, that kind of stuff, it would be good in my opinion, if we could use the reset like every month. So say I screw up on all of my goals and I don't do one of them. Well, maybe I, in my head, I would be like, okay, so I had a hard January. I wasn't able to stick with it, but now it's February. Maybe if those things are still important to me, I'm going to give them another whirl as opposed to just being super hard on yourself for failing your goals. 
But I think that's always been my mindset. Like I, I told you guys earlier in the video, like I don't strive for perfection in these videos. I don't strive them in, in my life. I, I strive to improve <laughs> and try to get better at things, you know, no better, do better kind of thing. And so um, I think that's probably why I, I don't um, have such a hard time with these resolutions. Okay, so anyways, I have no idea if this camera's even been recording. <laughs> Imagine if I go over there and none of this has recorded. But I want to thank you guys once again um, for tuning into my YouTube channel. If there is anything you guys want to talk for me to talk about topic-wise, leave it in the comments. I'm happy to do a video answering your questions specifically. Um, yeah, I appreciate it, guys. So have a wonderful day and take care, and we will connect soon. Bye.